Thanks very much, Jerry. Good morning, everyone. Um, great to be presenting uh, at this uh, great conference again this year. Obviously, we were very fortunate to share the, the honours the, for the Craig Oliver Award last year. Um, so, look, and we've made some tremendous strides forward on our, uh, on our key asset, Julemar. So, uh, uh, without further ado, let me uh, take you through the recent update. So, the normal forward-looking statements, disclosures, these are available to read. Uh, either on our website or if you'd like a hard copy, there's, um, please come by our booth uh, and read these in, in your own time. Uh, so Chalice, I think everyone uh, appreciates the, uh, the, the rapid growth that Chalice has had over the last two years on the back of a world-class discovery. Our Julemar project is uh, continuing to, to, to uh, shoot up the leaderboard in terms of uh, its global significance. It's a world-class polymetallic project in, in WA. Uh, a tier one scale, pit constrained uh, sulphide resource, uh, as Jerry said, PGEs, nickel, copper, cobalt, a little bit of gold there as well. Uh, and it equates to 330 million tonnes in pit uh, at almost 0.6 percent nickel equivalent or 1.6 grams per tonne palladium equivalent. So 10 million ounces of contained precious metals uh, and around about 900,000 tonnes of contained base metals. Uh, it's a tremendous uh, you know, uh, set of numbers uh, that obviously we're very, very proud of. What makes it particularly valuable and particularly unique is that just there's just no discoveries of this scale being made anywhere on the planet really at the moment. And, uh, and that's, that's why this captures so much attention. Um, there, you have to look back sort of 20 years plus to see a, 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 a discovery that really approaches the, the magnitude of this one. Uh, you know, you go back to Western Mining's discovery of, of West Musgrave uh, out in eastern WA, and then uh, it was a long time between drinks, really, before um, going back to the one before that. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a true, you know, global scale uh, and, and very much relevant uh, discovery for our time. Uh, and there's a whole a lot of work uh, yet to be done here uh, with the drill bit to fully understand the limits of this resource. So we've, we've drilled about 7% of the strike length of the geological feature that hosts this mineralisation. Uh, so you get a sense there that there is immense exploration upside. Um, and why is it so relevant, I guess, as well, is that as, as we all appreciate, the, the critical minerals requirement for a decarbonised world is substantial. Um, so we need, we need many, many more of these size discoveries um, to satisfy the demand from things like electric vehicles, uh, you know, renewables, uh, things like hydrogen. Um, these are very, very relevant metals for all those technologies and where, where, where better to get them out of than, uh, than just outside of Perth here in WA. Uh, so Chalice is a, is a, is a well-funded, you know, high-performing team. We've, we've, we've proven time and time again that not only can we find things, but we, we, we define mines uh, that end up being commercially successful. Uh, and we also return capital to our shareholders. We look after our shareholders. Obviously, I'm, I'm one. Uh, and and that's, a, that's part of our DNA. It's not just being technically sound and technically at the, at the top of our game. It's, it's looking after our shareholders commercially uh, as well. So uh, we're well funded. Uh, we finished last year with about 65 million in cash plus uh, about 9 million in, in liquid investments. Uh, and our share price performance has been exceptional, as most people would appreciate. Uh, up 50-fold since the discovery in, uh, in March of 2020. Uh, so this is a very uh, enjoyable chart to look at for, for the original holders of Chalice, starting with our discovery hole uh, back in March of 2020, uh, and then subsequent inclusion into ASX 300, ASX 200. Uh, we're sitting uh, at market cap now around about 2.8 billion Australian dollars, and, uh, and we're really sort of just getting going on the next phase of growth our target immediately north of the resource there at Hartog. Uh, so, you know, Julemar is a, is a province-defining discovery as well. The other thing that makes this so unique, it's not just shallow, it's not just got a high-grade core, it's not just in Western Australia, it's really a totally greenfield discovery. So all the surrounding areas, all the really this new province is wide open for more discovery and, and luckily we're basically in command of the, of, of, of the vast majority of it. Um, so the, the geological feature there, the Julemar complex, you can see uh, extends over 26 kilometres. That is a substantial amount of uh, exploration work ahead of us just there. Uh, and you can see where the deposit is there, Gonville, at the southern end there. 
uh, and that deposit is, is 70 kilometres away from, uh, from the, the CBD of Perth, around about 100 kilometres from where we are today. Uh, and that, that world-class resource was defined with 520 drill holes. And the, the drill holes that were drilled uh, and where the cutoff was made was basically in the middle of 2021. So we've drilled something like 300 more drill holes now at Gonville that will be part of the, the, the resource update. So we, we haven't uh, by any means closed off the, the Gonville discovery uh, to any degree. Uh, so we, we uh, you know, that, that resource covers two kilometres of strike length. Um, we are currently it just started really testing the, a further 10 kilometres of strike length. Uh, but while we do that, obviously all our uh, study team, all our engineers are really rapidly trying to move Gonville towards a mining development. Uh, and that is certainly helped by the fact that we've got world-class infrastructure, as you appreciate, uh, a city of circa two million people, fantastic workforce, uh, really there waiting to, to, uh, to be deployed um, just outside the northern suburbs of Perth. Uh, so the, the, these metals I mentioned, you know, platinum, palladium, I think are, are two particular that, that are doing a lot of heavy lifting against uh, climate change. At the moment, they probably don't get the credit they deserve, but they, they basically strip nitrous oxides out of exhaust uh, streams. And those are very, very potent greenhouse gases, much more potent than things like methane and CO2. Uh, so they are doing the heavy lifting. They are the green metals at the moment, you know, compared to nickel, copper, cobalt. The, these, are, these are the critical metals today. Uh, in future, they're likely to play a very important role in hydrogen. So things like fuel cells, uh, hydrogen transportation through means like ammonia, these are going to be the critical metals to enable those technologies. Um, but also nickel, nickel obviously playing a big role there as well. Nickel cobalt goes without saying, you know, electric vehicles, you know, very much dependent on these two metals and copper is basically the enabler of everything uh, to do with electrification. Um, so we've got a tier one scale pit constrained resource, as I said, that this is a, a view sort of looking to the northeast over the conceptual resource pit. Uh, it's got high grade internal core to the resource. Uh, and you can see all the open arrows there, basically open in most directions still. And still we have uh, five rigs here. Two, two rigs have just moved you know, across into the, state forest bound, into the state forest area to the north. Uh, but you can see that there's still a lot of drilling to be done here at Gonville. Um, so the, the contained metal numbers, are, again, on the right-hand side there, about 50% of the resources in the indicated category. Uh, we expect to upgrade that significantly by the next resource update, which we're aiming to put out in May. Uh, and I, I, actually, a lot of those holes are really already drilled. We're just waiting for, waiting for a number of assays. Uh, and I guess what, what makes this such an attractive proposition is that we have high-grade sulphide material that is uh, starting at a depth of about 30 metres below surface. So if you appreciate how rare it is to get high-grade mineralisation so shallow, usually you are chasing depths of you know, 500, 1,000, 1,500 metres deep to get this sort of material in the, in the big production centres of Russia, South Africa. So this is very, very unusual for it to be almost sticking out of the ground. Um, so within the, within the 330 million tonne resource number, we have approximately a quarter of those tonnes uh, have almost double the grade. Uh, so that really gives you a nice sweet spot to, to concentrate on in the early years of operations and maximise the profitability through that, uh, through that payback period. And you can see that the high grade blocks there, they hang together nicely as well. It's not like you've just sort of scattered uh, everywhere throughout the, uh, the deposit. Uh, looking at the, the resource here, you can see there's already some blocks, there's already some mineralisation well outside the limits of the pit shell, so none of those blocks are included in that 330 million tonne number. And you can see that the northern end on the left-hand side there, the pit is, is artificially shallow, really, just because there's a lack of drilling. So you can see that the, the growth potential is really in that, you know, deepening the, the pit dimension there at the northern end, uh, and then potentially going into the underground category. You can see there that everything is looking uh, to have a, a sort of northwesterly or plunge towards the bottom left-hand side of the page there. So that'll be the focus really for you know, deeper drilling in that, in that underground category. And it, as you can see at the bottom of the page, there's already evidence there of, of high-grade uh, mineralisation down at 850 metres deep. Uh, and we know there that the intrusion is still about 550 metres thick at that point. So there is a huge amount of drilling uh, to be done, you know, chasing further uh, down that dip towards the bottom left-hand side of the page. 
Uh, but what, what is everyone talking about at the moment? It goes without saying that everyone's uh, you know, very interested in, in what we're doing at Hartog. We, we got approval from the state government to start drilling late last year. Um, we've got two rigs now operating at Hartog. Uh, you can see there where the resource is at the bottom left-hand side of the page. Um, this is what exploration is all about. This is uh, the most exciting uh, drill program probably anywhere on the planet right now. Uh, and, and you can see why the, the, the EM response um, that at Hartog is, is very, very similar to what we've seen at Gonville, and that's delivered a world-class resource that's uh, very close to surface. So we've got coincident ground EM plates, uh, as well as uh, nickel, copper, soil anomalies uh, associated with those plates. So obviously it goes without saying, it's a very, very interesting and very exciting drill program that's underway at the moment. Uh, but that's certainly not the end of it. You can see Bodin, Jans, Torres, you know, some 15 plus kilometres away from our resource. Those are very interesting targets as well that we're sort of working our way from the northern end down with, with Air Corps uh, drilling at the moment. So we're waiting on a bunch of assays at the moment for Torres and the Air Corps rig is uh, currently operating at the Jans target there. Uh, we already have, a, I guess, a bit of an insight as to what Hartog may be. Uh, through drilling a, a little bit of an accidental discovery on farmland made late last year. We, we put some RC holes there, uh, as you can see there on the, on the left-hand side, northwest of Gonville. We, we extended a few RC lines really to see what happens to Gonville as you go sort of northwest. And we hit a new intrusive unit that was about 70 metres uh, above Gonville, uh, about 30 metres wide, and, and sure enough, there's a, the albeit narrow high-grade nickel copper PGEs in that new in ultramafic intrusive unit. So that little unit there, you can see, trends quite nicely up into the forest, uh, and obviously this is where, that's why, again, that is such an exciting target to drill. You can see how uh, extensive the, the EM response is there in that, uh, in that northern area. Um, so I guess there's a, there's a, a de-risking that's been done there by, by drilling those holes and finding that, that separate unit. Uh, and obviously, you know, finding it is one thing. Um, getting it out of the ground is, is arguably just as big a challenge. Um, so we, we have, you know, years worth of test work to be, to be done, really, to understand fully our mineralogy and, and how these metals will be extracted. Um, safe to say that the high-grade material, the high-grade sulphide material has been the focus of our initial work and we've had very positive results. We've basically shown that we can produce two separate concentrates, a copper precious metals concentrate as well as a nickel cobalt um, concentrate. Uh, we've got a tightened range of expected recoveries now uh, up on the right-hand side of that page. We believe those uh, concentrates will be very attractive to a whole range of customers, particularly the way the nickel market is at the moment, you know, everyone is desperate for feed. Everyone is absolutely fighting for any nickel they can get their hands on at the moment. And we've got very clean uh, concentrates there that we can produce uh, and sell to a whole range of customers. As you go down the grade profile, down the bottom of the page there, you can see that, you know, we're confident we will still be producing a copper precious metals concentrate through the, through the, you know, the, the you know, many years into the future for this operation. We think we can still sell that concentrate, but it makes sense to do a little bit more processing on the nickel. So that's really where we're looking at uh, other technologies now to maximise the value of that, uh, that remaining nickel, uh, copper, cobalt and PGEs once the copper and, and, uh, and PGEs have been floated off. So we're working with the, uh, the, the federal government there. They've provided some funding to support that. There's a range of technologies out there in the space. So I guess, yeah, watch this space uh, as, we, as we progress that work. Uh, and this, as for most people who know me, this is what really gets me excited is this page right here. So 8,000 square kilometres of essentially undrilled, untouched, unexplored tenure in our portfolio. So we've you know, been exploring on 150 square kilometres at Julemar. There's 7,850 square kilometres you know, to go, uh, and really it is from the bottom up. So we are, we are totally really, you know, uh, just really learning the basics on this whole new province, the West Yulgarn, uh, but we know, you know areas like this, you know, Craton margins like this, host some of the most prolific and world-class nickel copper deposits anywhere on the, on the planet. Uh, Norilsk, obviously, Voises Bay, Xinchuan, they're all, you know, within 50, 100 kilometres of the Craton edge. So we know we're in the right location here and it's certainly an exciting few years ahead as we scale out our exploration and, and test these areas. 
So I won't uh, dwell on the, on the timeline, but you can see obviously plenty going on in Chalice uh, as usual, and some significant upcoming milestones with a scoping study as well as a resource update, uh, and obviously that drilling at Hartog uh, underway at the moment. So, uh, you know, we have a world-class resource that really underpins, you know, what this company is. Uh, its pedigree is finding, uh, so we will continue to explore. Um, and, you know, one of our, you know, uh, experts is here with me at the booth today, Kevin, so please come and say good day to him. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, we've, we've proven that we've done it before. So um, I think this is a, a particularly exciting story in the space and, uh, and thank you very much. Thank you.